Look how dirty my arm is. Good grief. Ooh, it's an exciting day. One, almost 4th of July, fireworks are coming. You excited about that, Eli? Uh-huh. Two, we've got a lot of honey in the beehives. It's time to go extract some honey. Let's go. Life is gonna happen one way or the other, whether you like it or the Stop looking for the Dude, it's like four in the afternoon and you're still wearing your pajamas. How long are you gonna wear them for? Two weeks. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hello. Uh, how cool is that? We took a took a regular old food grade five gallon bucket, turned it into a little bee kit. Even got a lid for it so we can keep the bees and other bugs out of it. Lid for the top. It's pretty sweet. Come over here and you can see. So you just unscrew that a little bit and then you can pop that up. And then honey will flow right out of there. It'll be in sitting here and it'll just flow right out into a cup. And then when you're done, you just close that up. Pretty cool, huh? He's impressed. Before we run out to the beehives, I'm going to show you some of the equipment we got here real quick. So besides the five gallon bucket, the lid, the little spout, uh, we also got some paint strainers. These are perfect for letting honey drip through. We also got a more fixed strainer right here. This will fit on top of a five gallon bucket. So I may try that on one. I may try the strainer on the other, the, the paint filter. Also got this little guy. I think you can just use a knife or something, but this is something that you can just scrape along the comb to help open it up to allow the honey to flow. All these will be linked down below if you're interested. Now let's go check out the hives. All right, well, it's a little crazy back here. Why are there two hives here, Jake? Well, earlier this week on Instagram, you may have seen me move another hive out here. We got a swarm starting to happen. We actually have, this whole hive is, is pretty maxed out. It's close to full. What bees do, how they reproduce, how they multiply, is that when they outgrow a hive, then they'll split. They'll actually form up another swarm outside they'll get together they'll gather enough bees they'll gather they'll grow a new queen and then they'll leave and find a new hive so what we're doing to prevent that or at least keep the swarm working for us is we're moving a hive next to them we've got a, a new hive right here and so some of them have already started to move in but i'm still seeing the swarm right here so it worries me a little bit that they're not moved in there but i'm glad to see some bees have already moved in but we're gonna check here, we're gonna check in here, and then we'll move to the other hive. These ones are pretty good. We pulled a little bit of honey earlier in the week from here, but the majority of the honey is gonna be over at the wild swarm hive that we caught a few months ago. suit for Mother's Day. You excited? Yeah. You get nervous at all about being around the bees? No. Okay. All right, well first I want to check this hive. This is the new hive that they're moving into. So I just want to check and see how it's going in here. It's not really a big deal. It's nothing I'm going to harvest or anything in here, but I tried earlier in the week to move these guys by grabbing this pile right here and pushing it in, hoping if there's a queen that they'll move in. But let's see if we can get it to happen here. All right, well, we're done with that hive now. I want to check on this hive, so I'm going to take this top off. Look at that. That's pretty incredible. So you've got this about 75% capped. Oh, this side's only partially done. This is the first frame in the box. This is actually looking pretty good. How's this side looking? Yep, I think I'll be able to harvest from this frame. This looks good. I don't see any larva in there it's all honey all right we've so we've gotten all we can get from here i probably could get some more uh some random pieces the first couple of frames are built really nicely up and down the rest of it they started to build the comb at weird angles because um, they just had the wire so it's going to be really hard to take that apart without really messing up the hive and destroying that so right now i don't want to mess with it. and for all the bee experts out there i know there's a lot of people that watch that know more than we do about this we're fairly new to this we started with a beehive last year we got it late in the season and a lot of them died but be kind to us because we are still new to this we're learning we're also working with a horizontal hive not a langstroth hive so it's a little bit of a learning curve for both us and for probably some of you guys Yep, switch my headgear around. 
we'll try this, see if this works any better. We're at hive number two. This is our wild swarm hive. If you've been following us for any amount of time, we've captured this wild swarm at a neighbor's house earlier this year, and they have been growing by leaps and bounds, doing really amazing stuff in here. Can't wait to show you what they've built. This one's only partially capped, but I'm tempted to take it. I don't see them using it for larva. I think we'll use this one. I think this is so amazing because I think I put three frames of foundation in here, and this is the fourth frame. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth frame, and it's totally straight up and down. And so I didn't help them in any way. They build it perfect on here, where sometimes you'll see the bees will start to build at weird angles with some of their comb, and, and it'll be really hard to harvest. Yeah, this one's one of the better ones we've seen. This one's about a little over 50% on this backside, and Getting close to 50% capped here. We may have to take this one. This one they built so weird, like two frames on top of each other. And this side there's two layers of foundation. They're actually walking through this side to get in underneath. That one's got a long way to go, but man, that honey looks amazing right there. It's so thick in it. And it's only middle of the year, it's July. We should get more later this year that they're working on right now. Once they have that capped, we'll be able to get a lot more honey. The perks of having bees on your property is they help pollinate and you get honey from them. You get honey and then we can melt down the, the comb, the wax, and then you can turn that into candles and to chapstick. But really the for us, the pollinating factor is one of the, the big perks. What do you got, Eli? A bunny! Oh, he's so cute. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Like the claws. So we're going to put him back, right? Uh-huh. Alright. And be don't forward. We don't want to take him back to the house because Joey might kill it. Oh, this one frame already fell off. So we've got one that's looking good right there. The other frame, oh my gosh, this is just pure honey. Alright guys, this is where it gets fun. This is where we just start to drain the little pieces, start breaking it up into here. We'll crush it up and just let it fall through the hole. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay, carry this over. Put it on top of the other piece, and then you can lick your fingers when you're done. Mm, yummy! It's dripping down your hand. Ooh, looks so good. I just want to chew it. Got some chunks that we'll cut up and we'll drain them in there, and we've got some other chunks we'll drain through the paint strainer. I want to try this tool out a little bit. Takes the capping off right there. Alright, so we're going to leave this top part, even though it's dripping some honey, I'm going to leave this top part, but this will give the bees a place to start building on this frame. So we're trying this two different ways. We've got the, the paint filter right here, when you're going to need to crush that up. I can actually take the filter out and squeeze it to get the honey out. This one I'm going to need to crush it up so it'll drip through here. Oh, it's in a lot of honey. So this is the way you could do it without an extractor, is to strain it and let it drip into a bucket and it'd be already strained and ready to go into bottles. You want to lick my finger? <laughs> He's got a ton, he has so much, yeah you're good there, but he has so much honey on his gloves. Because it's too sticky. All right, and then in container number two here, we've got a bunch of comb, and we've got another frame that we pulled from the first hive. So we're gonna scrape that off, and then we'll squeeze that in through here. Oh, nice. All right, Eli gets to have the most fun here. He's gonna get to squeeze this whole big load of honey. It's gonna be fun.
pretty cool, huh? Yep. So now we're gonna let it drain. It's going through like a second filter here to finish up. And then tomorrow after it's all done, then we'll start to bottle it. That'll be really exciting. And we'll get to taste it. You want grape? Eat the grape, not my hand. Cashew. you. There you go. Ow! There you go. Oh, you dropped it. All right, we're back at the aviary hive, and this is a pretty cool spot along here. Of course, we've got the aviary that we're working on right over here, and we've got an awesome growth of raspberries right over here. What are you seeing, Becky? Oh man, that's a great one. Great plant. Yeah. Have you gotten to try any of these yet? Yeah, they're sweet. So we've all got a bucket, we're all picking some. You guys, you're getting some blackberries? How about you, Eli? Uh -huh. Are you eating them or are you collecting any? I'm eating some, one already. Okay, you're finding some? And it goes back quite a ways here. It probably goes back 20, 30 feet, but the length of it is down where Becky is, way past there. It goes all the way down here. Of course, it helps having a beehives right down here. It's one of the reasons we put it down here by this. Even over a couple days ago that we came out here, there's way more that are ripe and ready to be picked. We'll probably make some blackberry cobbler with this. Some blackberry jam. this time for the moment of truth. We've got our honey in here for the last uh, day or day and a half. There's about a three to four inch line right there of the honey. So we're about to open this up and fill these pint jars. All right, so we were making a guess as to how many of these we were gonna be able to fill with honey. My guess was six. He said seven and he doesn't talk, but that was <laughs> a good guess. I said eight. And I said nine. And how many did you say? I guess 10. So six through 10, we'll see who wins it. You guys ready? Good too.
nine jars right there and about half of another one. So we have nine and a half. That means Uriah and Eli are co-champions with 10 and nine as your guesses. It is way more than we thought we'd get, Becky. Yeah, it is. Get the first taste, get you a spoonful. Oh, eat it all, eat it all. Okay, gotta tell me what you think. Yummy. <laughs> it's good. Mm. Oh, do you like it? I want some more. Here. Well, Becky, this is two and a half, almost three years in the making when we started to try to catch a swarm of bees. Last year, finally catching a swarm, but then they died in the, in the fall when we got them. And to finally have our first jars to enjoy. We're gonna go give this one to the neighbor, give her the first jar we poured here to thank her for giving us the wild swarm of bees earlier this year. Hope you guys will try to get some bees. It was a lot of fun. Stop looking for the answers and you'll find what you've got.